Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Valerie, for that introduction. I want to, of course, thank all of our sponsors as well as our hosts uh, for the opportunity to moderate this panel of insightful authors, uh, incisive commentators, and engaged leaders. I want to quickly state the aims of our panel, introduce our panelists, and then open us up for conversation. Of course, uh, this evening, uh, our event is entitled The New Jerusalem, Black Life, the Church, and the Struggle for American Democracy. Our hosts have given us the charge of thinking on the theme of the fact that religious belief, religious institutions, and religious people came to be seen as essential to social freedom. And this remains the central paradox in African-American life and political history. Our discussion will examine the overlapping challenges of creating a basis for black collective activism, building independent black institutions, and determining the place of men, women, politics, and religion in leadership. Now to our panelists, who all have uh, long bios such that they could take up the entirety of our occasion, so I will simply list the titles of their books and uh, move on into the conversation first, to my most immediate right, and then moving uh, further along the panel. First is Anthea Butler. She is the author of Women in the Church of God in Christ, Making a Sanctified World, as well as the forthcoming uh, book, The Gospel According to Sarah Palin, The Gospel According to Sarah, that is, How Sarah Palin and the Tea Party are Galvanizing the Religious Right, and this will be out next year. Um, next to Anthea is Eddie Glaude. Eddie is the author of Exodus, Race, Religion, and Nation in Early 19th Century Black America, and more recently, in a shade of blue, pragmatism and the politics of black America. Following Eddie, Professor Glaude is the Reverend Dr. James Forbes, who is the uh, author of a 2010 book, Whose Gospel? A Concise Guide to Progressive Protestantism. And our final panelist, who will in fact lead us off in conversation in a moment, Aubrey Hendricks, the author of The Politics of Jesus, Rediscovering the True Revolutionary Nature of Jesus' Teachings, and in 2011, The Universe Bends Toward Justice, Radical Reflections on the Bible, the Church, and the Body Politic. Maybe taking the launch off of Professor Hendricks' most recent title with a quote that suggests what is perhaps the most iconic and popular image of black churches in African American religion taken from none other than Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, this whole host of assumptions when we think about our title, which has the church squarely fitted in between American democracy and black life. We imagine black churches out on the front lines marching and forget that in fact Dr. King represented a minority movement. I want to invite you, Professor Hendricks, and then as we move through the panel, to go in whatever direction you want, thinking about what is the appropriate way for us to think and understand the relationships between religion in general, but black churches in particular, in, this, in, in the larger context of American democracy. So religion, black church, and democracy. How do we, how should we, how could we imagine them in this particular moment? Yes, yes, well thank you. I'm glad to be here and with this distinguished uh, panel, all of whom are my friends and colleagues, and uh, so I trust we won't argue too much tonight. Um, but it's a very broad question uh, with regard to religion. I mean, there are some tensions that aren't usually discussed. You know, religion ultimately is theocratic, so it's not democratic. Um, most churches are not democratic. You know, um, they're very hierarchical and patriarchal. Um, so that we, you know, we have that there, and in that, it's most churches, the most influential uh, institution in black community that filters down. Um, and so, in a way, it's, it's disempowering uh, to, to, the, to the black masses, uh, in, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, you mentioned Dr. King. Dr. King, when he was trying to, to move to another level in his ministry, and that being um, fighting for economic justice, he was trying to mount the Poor People's Campaign, and he called a meeting in Washington, uh, in Virginia, rather, and uh, 124 ministers were invited, and uh, guess how many came? None. And I think this is sort of emblematic of a, 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 a sort of, it speaks to the fiction of the church at large, black church at large, as being the forefront um, of, of, uh, of our struggle. So I'll, I'll just say this. Um, the other problem is, though, is that it's not been until recently 
um, the last couple generations, uh, I think with my generation of scholarship, that we saw any um, significant critical mass of black biblical scholars, theological scholars, who were able to cut through uh, some of this dominationist uh, uh, dialogue, uh, discourse, that has permeated, uh, has permeated Christendom. And uh, with the result that the black church too often is held in thrall to the same kinds of misreadings uh, of, of, uh, of Jesus and the Gospels um, that we see in, in, in white churches, not just the patriarchy, um, but the, not the unwillingness, but the uh, ambivalence about being political seeing Jesus as a political figure, a political activist who is concerned about political egalitarianism, uh, economic egalitarianism. And so, I mean, these are some of the opening tensions I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to raise, but I would like to make it clear that I do appreciate the deep centrality of the black church to, uh, to black life. And uh, the black church, in many ways, is the only thing that got us over uh, for so long. Um, but it's now time that we can move to a I think to a much more informed uh, level and not just talk about, well, you know, the black church is so revolutionary, boy, we're in the front, forefront, but really start to look at it in a more incisive way in a more uh, systematic and programmatic way. Dr. Forbes, if we could maybe extend this. On one hand, Professor Hendricks sends up this really strong tension between religion as theocratic or black churches as driven by charismatic leaders in contrast to commitment to radical democracy that King is often believed to represent. You yourself are a product of uh, churches that are often written out of the story of the black liberal Protestant establishment that King would represent, right? Baptist and Methodist churches. How might you see uh, Pentecostal churches, but also the liberal Protestant tradition of a Riverside uh, as complicating that story? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I think Genesis helps us to look at our problem, and that is that in Genesis, there is this snake that comes up and begins to engage in conversation with Eve, and the snake actually participates in calling into question what God said, and the implications are what we should do, so that the the major religious enterprise may be viewed as probably having distorted the nature of black being and suggested that God said one thing about who black folks are and that the black church is God's rebuttal saying this is what I said and not what the snake said. Now snake is not in the Farrakhan sense calling other people de demonic in this regard. But what this is, is, is that the, the God who calls all of us God's children, thereby suggesting the democratic ideal, that the black church gets caught between listening to what the snake said versus what God has clarified about who we are. And when the black church is really being the church that in a sense God uses to refute what was said by the other church, we are likely to be sensitive to the democratic ideal and engaged in activities that lead us to a more democratic society. When we listen to the other voice about who we are as black people, we play the games of one-upmanship, of God's having the outhouse and the in-house kind of folks, or about postponing the gratification until the great by and by. So the real challenge today is whether the black church believes what God said about us all being God's children or whether we have lots of divine DNA testing as to who is really an authentic offspring of God. And James Washington, my departed friend, used to say our problem was 
the fact that there has been